before each of these, I always make a point to dive as deep as I can into the, the works of the musicians I'm talking to. And uh, it's been really inspiring to go you know, back over your catalog and to listen to as much of your music as I can. But you've given me a real challenge because you've got a really astounding body of work. I mean, you've really put out a, a ton of music. It's hard to imagine you're getting a lot of sleep. <laughs> and uh, I'm wondering if you can give me a little insight into, one, where you um, look for inspiration for new music. And then once you have an idea, how you go about what your methodology is in trying to take that idea and turn it into, uh, you know, an arrangement for a large ensemble or for the Claudia Quintet or for any of your other groups. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I'm always looking for inspiration. So it, it um, became apparent many years ago that, that I could really use anything for inspiration, like it could be music, it could be non-music, uh, it could be numbers, images, it could be an experience of some kind. Um, you know, anything that was like somehow meaningful or I wanted something I wanted to share with others. So it could be a book, uh, you know, um, that uh, that's usually... Not all the time. Sometimes it starts just with music, but a lot of times it starts with something that doesn't have anything to do with music. And then <clears throat> the fun is is translating that to music, you know? So this kind of process of like, now, now what do I do with this? I've got this thing and then I, you know, I somehow want, want it to be related to to the music. Although sometimes it doesn't matter also. It can just be what I would call a cell. And and through that cell, then I make a piece. And then nobody has to even know that it started with this, you know, certain little thing. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it, it's cool if people know. Sometimes it might, might, might bring some kind of extra meaning to, to the listening experience. Um, but other times it's just a, a, a way for me to to start in a different place than I would um, like if I just kind of started in a it, it, where I you know where my habits would take me. Mm -hmm. So if as long as I as kind of start somewhere else and then you know create like a whole process based on that where I started um it's not a guarantee but but the the I think the goal would be that I don't repeat myself mm -hmm. um and also that I oh I don't repeat you know um what others have done and that I you know kind of um create something that's somehow like its own thing it's unique doesn't have to be like revolutionary, but it's like uh, at least I have not heard that yet. Sure. So so it's therefore it's like that's where I want to be, like in the I haven't heard that yet area. Yeah. Um, of course, through through ignorance, it's possible that you know I just haven't heard <laughs> something and it has been done already. But you know I try to. Um, I, I try to uh, check out a lot of music, and I, I like lots of different kinds of music. So, um, you know, it hasn't happened too many times that, uh, you know, I I think I have this, like, incredible, uh, unique thing, and then I realize, oh, somebody, uh, you know, already did that. Sure. Um, it's happened a few times, uh, but, yeah, for the most part. Um, so, let's see, that was only the first part of your question, I think. Uh, yeah. Although I'll, I'll add, I, I think that that's uh, really a feature is of, you, of your music is that you're able to have these very different realms. Like, I feel like each piece is unique, and yet it all speaks to your own individual approach. I mean, it's very def definitively you, but everything that you do is slightly different. And I, I imagine that, um, from what you're talking about, that having the inspiration come from so many different places really gives you the opportunity to try out different things and... and uh, you know, avoid falling into your own 
let's say, cliches or your own habits. Yeah, for sure. Everybody has those. Yeah. For sure. And and it's easy to, in the moment when you're writing, you're kind of vulnerable and you're looking for something. So if there's something like within reach, you you reach for it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the maybe advantages, a disadvantage that I maybe turned into an advantage is being a drummer. I didn't have a lot of um, harmonic, uh, let's say, progressions at my fingertips like like a guitarist or a pianist might have. Mm-hmm. Um, and so also as, as a non uh, you know pitch player. I didn't have like a lot of licks or even scales or, you know, I didn't, didn't really have that. It's there. I know it, but it's not like right there. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so in a way that was, you know, it made it harder at first because I'm like, where do I go? I can't do this. I can't do this. Ah, you know, where am I? But then, um, you know, down the line, I realized, oh, that's it's kind of an advantage. And when I started hearing my friends write music and I was writing music and their music was really good. Uh, I'm speaking really generally, but you know, a lot of it kind of sounded like music I had heard before. And it was almost like music that's about music or music that's based on music. And I was like, yeah, that's really good. I mean, like technique could be good and craft and it could be a nice tune. But then, you know, a lot of times there was something... I thought, well, but you know, it's kind of, I've heard, kind of heard that before, you know, mm-hmm. um, and that might be a, a thing for me that's that I had since a very little, when I was very little, that sometimes is 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 a drag, but it's that you know, I I I never wanted to hear um, the same thing again, you know. So even you know when I first started listening to music, it seemed like all the beats were the same. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, I know it's more nuanced than that. They're not all the same. And even some of them that are technically the same have a different feel, a different sound. You know, now I understand that more. But, it, you know, there was years where I was just like, everything's like a backbeat on two and four. Like, what's going on? Like, all it's all the same stuff, you know? And I, so I didn't deal with, like, lots of music because it just, in a in a kind of surface way sounded like other music okay you know yeah um, i've gotten over that a lot but you know even chord progressions you know when I, uh, there was a lot of pop music and i was like wait a minute that's not a new tune i've heard that progression before you know and then sure. immediately i would li- I'd just be like all right i'm not i'm not gonna listen to that you know sure um so that's so, something so- i just had since i was young but you know i've gotten better at that <laughs> sure. So you're a, so when you're a young kid, you're try, you're looking for all kinds of different styles of music because you're getting bored of just listening to the you know. Whatever yeah, I mean that's how I got that's how I got into jazz. You know, because mm-hmm. when I heard jazz, I was just like, "What is that?" You know, like sure, yeah. I don't know what's going on. And then you know I'd hear it again. I'm like, I still not don't really know what's going on. I kind of heard a few things the second time that I didn't hear the first time. You know. And then, yeah, and then I'd hear another, I'd hear the same tune, but with a different band. And it was like, oh my God, it's totally different. And, you know, and then of course live. So there's, you know, the, the improvisation aspect. Um, sure. But then, you know, of course, like 15 years later, I was just like, every jazz tune has the same form, you know? And I was like, I don't, you know. So then that was, that was dismissed. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Right. For the yeah. same kind of reasons. But at first, I was just like, you know, the mystery of it. It's a, it's a mystery, sure. you know, that really, I like mysterious things. I like when I don't know what it is. Like, mm-hmm. when I'm listening to something and I'm like, I don't really know what that is. I don't know what instrument it is or I don't know, what is that, you know? And I'll, and I don't try to, usually I don't try to be like too the, th- theoretical and figure it out at that moment. Like, I've been to concerts like Steve Coleman concerts where everyone's like getting out their you know fingers and try, okay this is in seven and you know trying to figure right, out right sure yeah so i don't usually do that but but i just like to be in that state of like i don't know what this is you know and, sure uh that's 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 kind of maybe the driving force behind the music that i'm writing is i kind of w- want people to also be like hmm i don't know not sure like you know it could be i don't know what style this is or 
I don't know how this was put together or like with the Claudia Quintet, I think what we get into a lot is like, I don't know what instrument that is. Is that a, that sounds like a, what is that? Is that a reed instrument? Is it, oh, it's clarinet and accordion. So it sounds like two clarinets or it sounds like, you know, like, sure. Mm -hmm. What is that? When you put those instruments together, you get like a hyper instrument, you know, what, what is that? So yeah, I think that's a, that's a big thing behind it is I, I, I like that not knowing. Thank you. 